Good afternoon to all of you. Of all the things that you read in my profile, you would have observed that I've been into hardcore technology or military affairs, where there was little connect initially. So what I did it is, but the sequence of events in the life it suddenly happened, which completely changed the way I operated, and that is what I'm going to talk about today. The two stories, one in which I was individually involved. and second one in which i was involved as a team where we uh did our best to provide empathy to the society so the deadline is on the 31st of july 2018 at 4 o'clock i was attending my farewell at the national security council which was a week uh and a week later i was supposed to be saying adieu to the air force after 21 years as a fighter pilot at around 4 o'clock right in the middle when i was saying thank you and bye bye is i got a call from the southern naval command there was a lot of urgency and seriousness in the voice idiki dam in kerala ernakulam district uh, the water levels were flowing above the danger mark and the navy had been called in by this civil administration to support in rescue the navy was looking for accurate geospatial inputs something to do with satellite data survey data so that they could plan the disaster response for whatever reasons none of the agencies were responding at that time and that's how i got a call because i started the geospatial reforms in the country and i was heavily into geospatial i ran a lab in the prime minister's office i had handed over my charge and that was a decision dilemma i had to do it on my own if i had to take ownership i had precisely 10 minutes to deliver because the southern naval command was meeting the collector and they had to roll out a plan because the water levels were rising it was incessantly raining and lakhs of lives were at stake i had no map no satellite imagery no technical input about the situation on ground i was as, as blind as you are right now but then there was something that happened inside and i said this risk is worth the effort because there are lives at stake and then i agreed to take it on from whatever i could i opened my google maps app i studied the satellite data the lay of the land the terrain the weather conditions and then applied all that i knew to come out with a quick solution in precisely maybe 2 to 3 minutes and thereafter i read out a voice note to the navy because it's difficult to note down and people at the other side wanted a voice note so in that there was a full fledged plan a strategy action plan of how to go about it identifying rescue areas or the concentration areas where the people have to be evacuated which are the sequences to be followed for evacuation how to go about positioning the supply chains to sustain the uh, disaster operations should the dam break or in case the flood waters have to be released in an emergency condition i had never done this in my life before being completely blind the risk was very high under ordinary conditions nobody will risk it because the consequence can be disastrous but then somebody had to do it so there are times in your life where you have to do something uh, because the the effort in doing that is worth it even if there is a failure involved and that is what was the pressure at that time you would wonder that how it all happened was it something that we are hardwired absolutely not i was not a disaster specialist but the experience that i had for on account of my training in nda where you put service before self is something which is inherently hardwired inside us which made me take that call the experience of a fighter pilot to take split second decisions to be able to process 
multiple situations at the same time to be able to uh, arrange things in a sequential manner so that at least something would happen positively on ground is something that came handy at that stage. It was a job done. Uh, the Navy stated that the inputs that I had given were very accurate and they were fully implemented. They called it a human service, but I feel that the people who deserve credit for more of the people on ground to whom these inputs were given, whether they were fishermen, they were rescuers, or ordinary people or people in the civil administration. So the important message is that empathy isn't about a feeling. It is about choosing to stand between chaos and hope. Because when somebody comes to you with a hope that you'll help, even if you don't know anything about it, at least you should put an effort to see what you can do to bring an impact on ground. The second story is about COVID-19. I'm sure most of you would have seen some dimensions of it, especially the young students. So the dateline was again April and May when the, uh, the cases were rising suddenly. We have all known about it. Now, I was again a hardcore technology guy, more into geospatial sciences. But when people started reaching out to me for help, through Kranti. Now, Kranti was a think tank that I established in the, when I was serving in the National Security Council for steering the geospatial reforms in the country. It was a small group where people just contributed ideas. But over a period of time, I had created a network of about 125 groups covering 64 verticals for nation building. And because people had some faith in me, they had read about my previous acts, they reached out. And trust me, the messages that were coming were in thousands. Before you could read a message, it, the thousand lines already there. It was like a hose pipe of a fire hydrant which was let loose. At that time, again, the thought triggered that how do I manage it? And that is where, again, I use my skills as a geospatial analyst to organize the whole show. I didn't have fancy tools. I had a whiteboard, I had Google Maps, I had my mobile. But what I had was the most important thing the human resource and the ability to scale up. So overnight we scaled up, I reached out to some college professors and I had 400 girl volunteers from four colleges. And they were youngsters like you who had never seen the front side of their college because it was locked down. They were net seeing, they were addicted to Netflix or maybe just browsing on the internet. But overnight, they became life saviors. The entire operations that were conducted by us, so you see these two girls there? They are the ones who managed the entire show 24 hours into four and a half months duty roster for 45 groups and not a single absentee. Not easy when you're managing teams from different departments and different colleges. These are the girls, this is a small sample of this team. It was veteran-led and guided, but executed by the young girls. And they themselves were losing relatives. Somebody was losing a parents. And they were there grieving and then coming back into action. This is a story about youth who was awakened by Kranti. It's like Kranti worked as a jamwant in their lives and gave them a completely different purpose to serve the society, to feel the pain, share that pain, live that pain, and then work towards reducing the pain in the society. And this story about COVID-19 is about this team that delivered. My role was just to provide a canvas to give them the opportunity. A fantastic case I would like to bring out here is a lady who was SPO2 varying between 30, 50 to 40, pregnant, 7 months, from Hyderabad, so Haridwar, she was moved overnight through a very complicated operation because every hospital on the route was tied up. Should something happen to the lady, what emergency you handle? Somebody was handling up blood param uh, breathing parameters. One guy was managing the driver. Somebody was ensuring road clearances. So a good team of about 
70, 80 people were involved in just moving that patient to Delhi. The person came to Delhi. There was a situation where the hospital refused admission. Now she had 19 minutes of oxygen left. And the nearest hospital where we again tied up in emergency was 31 minutes away. So it was a race of a lifetime. Wherein you had to deal with the traffic. So we had to arrange alternate ambulances which are formatting. Should this oxygen level go down or in case it gets stuck, we immediately shift oxygen and bring it to this ambulance. The hospitals are cooperative here and the doctors are standing at the gate. So the moment the doors opened, the oxygen and the doctors took over. So that was the level of precision worked in by a team of young girls who are just maybe one year senior to you. The class 12 students are here. And they delivered on ground. So there is a lot of hope that I have with this generation that is being groomed here across the nation. Only thing what we need to do is we need to guide them, we need to ignite them the right way and we need to ignite this sense of empathy in them so that they contribute sensibly and positively towards the society. So on that night, a baby girl was born. There's another case of twin kids. Like this, there were enormous amount of cases. 3,500 cases dealt with safely across the country, which involved at times making 600 calls to get one oxygen cylinder through one night. That was the kind of efforts that were put in. We had saved 85 NRI uh, parents of NRIs who even offered 100000 to $500,000. But we did not take a single penny because this was seva to the society and no meva inside it. And that is how we were very different from many others. Medicines like tocilizumab, top right corner, was delivered by a person from Bhilwara driving all the way to Udden through the night, free of cost. So, in India, it's a culture to give. What needs is the young soldiers of the society was sitting here. When you go out, you need to spread that message to get to a culture, to ignite that sense of connect that we have with humanity and serve the society. You don't need to do anything big. You just need to use your connects. And that is what the story is all about. How did we succeed? We succeeded because we gave full freedom to the youngsters. I just had to give them one briefing of one hour. And after that, they were experts in life safety. Next, the rule was that even if there is 0.0001% hope of saving, shake the earth, move the mountains, but that patient has to be saved. Other than one or two cases where there were deliberate interventions in the family, for whatever reasons they didn't listen to us, we didn't lose a single patient on the road. And the secret sauce was use of geospatial technology with empathy to do excellent oxygen calculations, excellent coordination. There were people who didn't sleep for 150 hours, maybe just half an hour every day. That was the level of commitment that people showed. Most important was there were cases where FIRs were being fired against people who are helping. And that is the time when I gave them that assurance that if there is no success, the glory is yours. But if there is a single point of failure anywhere, I will take the blame. And that is something which you as leaders, because you will be team leaders tomorrow. And this is what you need to ensure that good, bad, ugly, you have to own your decision. Because when you have to, when you implement social, uh, in areas of social uh, empathy, very important to take ownership because things can go wrong. There are people who may twist the story. So you need to think beyond the normal and ensure that you protect your team who work for you. This was a surprise. We One of the cornerstone was that we never asked for glory. It came. I still don't know who got it back. But it worked. It helped. That's from a late governor, Shekhar He was a chief mentor. He himself saw operations in centers as letter of operation. 
uh, appreciation for the team. Remember, it's the team that matters. You yourself are nothing. If you work for your team, you are loyal to your team, you trust your team, the team will deliver and you will have bring impact on the ground. But if you stay individualistic, seeking glory, you may have a very short term rise, but ultimately, that will be your downfall. Remember this, glory life. And the most important thing, how are the three ways you can bring in? First, a saving somebody's life. It could be through a telephone, it could be just listening to somebody who's distressed. There were 30 cases where I had personally intervened to save suicides, including a girl who was just about to jump off the ramp because there was so much of mental uh, health issues happening during COVID. And the risk was the last phone number is mine if she had jumped. I would have been in a lockup at least for a day or two to find out why that girl jumped because the last call was So you have to take the risk. It's a calculated risk. But that, that is how life works. The next important thing is how you work to make somebody capable to earn his living. That means skill and teaching something. Wherever you say you have still better resources than some people who don't have resources. Can you do something to even just teach that person? One hour on a weekend, teach. Have conversations with people around you. People who are not that lucky in life. And see what you can do to bring that change in their life. And that is what's important. You need to be the change makers. We have lived a certain amount of life. We have some shelf life left. But you are the future of this country. And that is where you need to make a difference. Then the last one is, sorry, to be able to do things which, by which you create jobs. And that is where if you hear about Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he talks about creating entrepreneurships. He an entrepreneur, rather than looking for a job, create jobs. Because you are in the privileged one who are studying in good schools. So you need to rise and shine, create wealth to create jobs. So I'm just move a slide, please. Yeah. So next time, whenever you get a call, rather than being silent, you need to act. It's very important to act because if you don't act, nothing will happen in this issue. This is a very important quote. I shall pass through this world but once. So if there's anything I can do, let me not deter it. Let me do it now because I will not pass through this world again. And if you understand the depth of it, you will always be a shining star and an example for somebody to be the um, empathy leader of the society. Thank you so much.